Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here with you. Uh, it's uh, mainly to, to Apollo Hospitals for organizing and invitation. And also, thank you to thanks to Metatel that I think where during the organization we could actually meet together and, uh, and see in, the, in this other world. Uh, let me briefly just try to think uh, from the, let's say, European perspective. I'm actually from Czech Republic, which is a relatively very small country, just 10 million inhabitants. And also my company is much smaller than uh, most of the others. So from, just let me try to make a small perspective on how uh, IT technologies could be helpful and telemedicine mainly. Uh, could be helpful in uh, uh, doing and, uh, let's say, improving uh, the health. Uh, and uh, since, uh, let's say, uh, the chronic non-communicable diseases represent uh, quite a major factor, uh, in, uh, mainly in Europe, but also in the whole world, let me try to be focused on these. These three parts of the presentation. First, I would like to be focused on some patients. Well, I'll give you some uh, um, some case studies and show where a focus could be. Then also the methodology and how uh, telemedicine mainly can be helpful in uh, both the early detection and but also uh, adoption of uh, some more softer and non-invasive therapies. And third part, I'll give you some examples of some existing programs in Europe, but also some cooperation programs as well. Well, let me first of all choose a patient who is kind of uh, representative of uh, what is happening and, or let's say what, what is uh, an issue and also a challenge and opportunity for, for telemedicine. Uh, imagine a gentleman who is actually uh, 66 years old. Uh, he is a non-smoker and he suffers from diabetes mellitus, second type. Uh, he has a light dyslipidemy and co corrected hypertension. So basically he seems quite okay. Um, the only thing is, what is happening is that sometimes he feels some pain is in his limb. Uh, this is actually a case which we run up in Prague. So it means uh, uh, not a rural area, but quite, let's say, a place with a very good quality of healthcare. The only thing what was happening is that this patient was actually trying to tell uh, his uh, diabetologist uh, that uh, he feels a pain and something is not right. And it took some time. Um, then after some moments, then actually he really insisted that he needed to, uh, to have some more treatment and uh, that it, it, the situation is probably not normal. He was sent to a program uh, which, which is run basically by just a nurse uh, in, a, in a Prague and he was measured. And at that moment, even though his uh, hypertension was corrected and let's say all our other parameters seems okay, uh, it was found out that his pulse wave it means his peripheral perfusion was not fine. Uh, when he was measured, it was actually found that, uh, uh, that these parameters uh, were quite, quite critical. So even though he seemed to be almost healthy, he had to be sent for a surgery, uh, actually to avoid uh, the amputation of the left limb. Uh, on, the, on your left-hand side, you can see the situation before the surgery. Uh, where actually he was just, just, just measured and uh, since uh, the pathology he was uh, also evaluated with uh, imaging method uh, where it's very clearly seen that on his left limb uh, there, was, uh, there was an interruption of the, of, the, of the flow and he had only a peripheral perfusion or, or let's say just uh, and, and not the correct one. So after the substitution, which is on the left hand side, uh, he, was, uh, he was put back and I think he could become back an active walker. But the trouble here is, and the reason why I show you this, uh, this is a typical patient in Europe, and this unfortunately happens very often. Uh, we have an aging population, we have quite a number of people who suffer from diabetes, and these secondary uh, effects of, of diabetes and, uh, and have quite quite dangerous situation, mainly, this, this is well known, uh, to the peripheral perfusion. Unfortunately, so far, the system and the medical systems in, in Europe are so much fragmented that very often this happens. That actually the patient, even though he's diabetic, is conscious and comes to see the doctor, uh, he comes to the situation that even his lamp is at risk. It's well known that uh, about 60% of the non-traumatic uh, amputation, lower limb amputations in the world are due e exactly to this, uh, to this to this reason. Another case is from rural area. In this case, the rural area uh, is, is let's say a place which is about uh, 100 kilometers from Prague but anyway you are about 30 minutes to the next doctor and there is a diabetologist and there's also uh, let's say expert cardiologist which are about 45 minutes from the place where this gentleman lives. 
Uh, this man is actually 70 years old, he's diabetic, and he suffers, as, as, as is seen now on, on the picture, from a very severe peripheral artery disease. Unfortunately, as the same way as the previous gentleman, he was not treated for quite some time, and when he arrived into our program that we have, it was unfortunately too late to make any kind of surgery. So the only way how to save his lower limbs, in this case, both of the limbs, because as you see, the arteries are almost non-existing. Uh, so uh, we had to uh, put up some kind of combination of uh, physiotherapy uh, together with some intensive uh, uh, medical uh, medicaments uh, uh, therapies, which was very closely monitored in his natural environment. So far, what is good is that he is living, he has both uh, of his legs, and uh, actually the claudication uh, um, distance, which is the, the distance he's, he's able to walk, improved from 20 meters to 50 meters. Again, this, this gentleman was, I think, very conscious. He tried to see doctors, and even though he was not, let's say, in an area which would be economically difficult, just 45 minutes from a from doctor, just due to the fragmentation, was not treated correctly. Based, based on that, we, we did a study together with, with some doctors and centers. We worked together uh, where, uh, where we put together uh, almost, let's say, 1,700 1, 1, patients uh, who were actually coming directly to those centers and we're trying to see uh, how is the situation. These are mainly, uh, mainly patients who, were, who are coming from diabetology and uh, also who suffered from some kind of symptoms related to, uh, to, the, to their lower limbs. Uh, it was not, what I would say this study was not randomized because we were just using it in a normal operation. Uh, basically what I would like to show is, uh, if, since there is a high percentage of people who suffer from diabetes, that's why also there's a very high percentage of people who actually have some kind of pathology. But the most important group that we actually divided the patients according uh, to, to the status of their peripheral perfusion. So one group was healthy, and in this case, again, this group is very small uh, compared to normal population because actually these patients had some symptoms. Uh, so then, then you see that there is a second group, which is border, which actually, which is the, the place, or let's say the status of the disease, where are very often uh, the values and the function of the peripheral perfusion can be still reversed. So mainly related to uh, endothelial dysfunction, you are still in a situation where you can bring the perfusion back without a surgery, and uh, you can bring it back to real and less than natural values. Then the third group, the pathological one, which is on the right-hand side, are those patients uh, who are uh, who, where really uh, surgery is already needed, and where we try to, let's say, at least minimize the invasiveness of the, of the surgery. But the most important group is the border one, where still you can work, you can avoid surgery, you can avoid, uh, let's say, invasive, or you can, you can avoid also the, the most massive uh, difficulties and effects for them. And this is, let's say, one of the purpose of, now, what I'm, as I've told you, I'm from Czech Republic, so uh, some programs we run are in Prague, uh, which is, again, a relatively smaller city compared to yours, just one million inhabitants, but still a very good access to the most uh, medical uh, services. Uh, the programs that we started and we run in Prague are actually focused first on the early detection and monitoring of patients uh, in order to avoid the secondary effects of the, mainly diabetes, but also some other chronic diseases, and we are mainly focused there uh, on, the, um, on the vascular and cardiovascular uh, disease. Um, we also try so that, uh, let's say, thanks to this program, uh, there is an opportunity and also the time window when there is a way how to reverse uh, the illness, so how to apply non-invasive or, let's say, softly invasive therapies. And, uh, and also, uh, in, the, in the meantime, we try to minimize surgeries. Uh, and another outcome, actually, which is linked to that, is try to avoid amputation, because still, it's, uh, it's very strange that we live in a, in a time when we have 60% of uh, amputations, non-traumatic amputations worldwide due to this, and I think most of these could be really avoided. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we also try to work with technologies where the sensitivity and specificity is over 90%, and uh, these technologies, mainly for the diagnostic side, are only used by the nurses. So it means the doctor himself is not, uh, let's say, he doesn't suffer from the burden of the patients, 
that, that are needed to measure, and he only comes in, in play where uh, actually uh, there is at least the first evaluation. So that's why we can highly increase the impact also for, for some regions. For one, one part is the early action, the second part is also the monitoring of pharmacodynamic effects. We try to, uh, to work so that thanks to the monitoring, we can really personalize and, uh, and improve the outcomes of some, uh, um, of, of some, some pharmacode or, or some uh, medicines, mainly related to, uh, to, to vascular side. In the meantime, there is now a new research program, which thanks to the fact that we can have and see the patients in the early stage, when lots of, uh, uh, or let's say the space, and the opportunities for therapies are more open. We also started to work with a clinic that works on cell therapies. Uh, where naturally, cell, um, stem cell therapies are have much wider applications. But in this case, we are just focused on the endothelium uh, dysfunction and try to make sure that patients, even though let's say this, uh, it is, uh, let's say microinvasive, that still they they can have a better outcomes and they can reverse. It's true that so far, this is kind of research project. Part of working in, in major cities in Europe, we also have uh, some cooperation in Brazil. And now let me show you this. This is a one. It's a one of the oldest rural hospitals in Brazil. It's in southern part of uh, Rio Grande do Sul, not far away from, uh, from the border of uh, Argentina and, and Uruguay. And uh, the people who are there, I think that there's a very nice team. But unfortunately, uh, this, this area, uh, it's, a, it's a place which has a very high incidence of diabetes and unfortunately also a very high incidence of uh, amputations, of lower limb amputations which are related to that. Uh, it's mainly due to the fact that this, uh, this is an area where tobacco uh, is, um, is, is actually, where there are lots of plants of tobacco and there's high tobacco consumption and in the meantime, um, high meat consumption. So these two factors are probably one of the two of the most important ones. Just to give you some examples of the patients that we had there in this, in this program, um, one first of them, or one of the first patients, uh, is, a, is a lady, she's 70 years old, 74 years old, and she suffers more than 25 years of diabetes. So based on that, one can say that uh, she has quite high risk, high risk, uh, uh, high risk factors. But in the meantime, uh, when she was measured, surprisingly, her, let's say, peripheral perfusion uh, where we use the pulse wave evaluation was almost perfect. Let's say the, the age, her vascular age, would be somewhere on the level of 40 years. And uh, let's say a good lesson that one can also learn from rural areas is that uh, this lady, when she was asked if she does any kind of uh, uh, therapy or what, 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 she, what did she do during her life, she said that she's just walking about 15 to 20 kilometers a day in her fields which proves that actually walk-in is probably one of the most natural and convenient therapy in, the, in this. In the second patient, which, un, which is unfortunately slightly different as, as, as a case, is a, is a typical from the region. It's a male, 52 years old, uh, he's a smoker, and he didn't know much about his, uh, uh, about his health status. He just somehow felt that he wanted to come for the program because uh, he, was, he started to be afraid. Uh, and, uh, when, when you just have a look, just visually, he had a very different and already very altered pulse wave. So it means that his peripheral perfusion was already in a non-reversible stage. So he was not too far away, unfortunately, from a surgery. Uh, and this is unfortunately the case. And still, I think the, the advantage is that the patient came at least in time. So it means that maybe in a couple of years, he could be in a situation of amputation. Now he still has a change, a chance to, to change. As, as every program is always based on a team, and I think what is very nice in rural areas is that the teams are integrated. And I would say that this is the great advantage of, uh, of countries like India or Brazil, that I think people come together. And in this case, uh, let's say the diabetologist, the cardiologist, the nurse, all people are together because they try to serve the given region, which I believe is a very important and key uh, asset for, uh, for that. In this case, actually, this very program is, is very much helped by, uh, by one of the Meditel members, uh, Adolf Hoschbarenberg, who is actually the second from, from the left, the cardiologist who is leading that. Very simple. Basically, I show it here because some patients are measured in, in Brazil, and since there is not immediately a doctor available, they send the data and we evaluate it in Europe and send it back to them. But in the meantime, uh, there's also some learning and the helping for so that the local doctors uh, can participate on the program as well. So let me summarize. Uh, I truly believe that telemedicine is a great uh, 
mean for helping to, uh, to be more, much more effective in the early detection and monitoring of patients, which can lead to improvement uh, in the, uh, mainly in the uh, chronic non-communicable non diseases. In the meantime, also telemedicine opens the way so that, uh, uh, let's say, softer and uh, more modern therapies could be used because we just use the opportunity window and do it in time. And in the meantime, I think it's a great thing which brings people together where uh, in the telemedical programs, quite often uh, cardiologists and angiologists or, um, or, or others are together and are not separated. Thank you very much for attention.